Good morning from the Via Dolorosa. We are at the sixth station, and this tour will be about the women power of Christianity, especially um, the one who walks with Jesus at the Holy Week. Although it's not part of the Bible, there's a wonderful uh, traditions about Saint Veronica that was standing where we are standing now and looking at Jesus that walked up through the crucifixion place to the Golgotha, to the Calvary, together with Saint Simon. Now, although she's not part of the Bible, so many Christians believe in that story and it's such an amazing one. We are talking about a woman that knew that she is taking a risk. She is helping Jesus by um, cleaning his sweat. But the soldiers, the Roman soldiers around Jesus might, I don't know, put her in jail or even crucify her because she is helping uh, Jesus. In those 14 stations, no one really helped Jesus. Saint Simon was forced to help Jesus. Now we are dedicating that video and that rosary to a great person, um, Thomas. Thomas um, Otom, as I know him. When I say know him, I'm talking about uh, emails that uh, we are sending to each other lately. Uh, Thomas Yadon. Um, they dedicated the tour to the women of Jesus. And this is amazing. Uh, this is amazing. Um, for that, he bought two things. The first one is the Jerusalem cross, which is a symbol of Jerusalem. And the other thing, oops, is the rosary with Jerusalem on it. And I'm going to bless it while I'm actually walking through Jerusalem and telling you the story itself. Then it's going to be a regular story, but with a twist. Then if you want to have your own cross, no problem. I will take a, a video of your cross just like I'm taking Thomas or Tom cross. I will bless it in Jerusalem in one of the places that you will choose. And then I will upload the video to YouTube. That's why you're watching that video. And I will send the cross itself to him. Then the prices of the cross is, is I mean, there's no price for it. It's priceless. And the same for the rosary. Let's face it, you can buy rosary in so many places. You can buy crosses in so many places, but not one that's been blessed in the holy city of Jerusalem. Then power, women power. We are continuing up and we are saying hello to the salesmen around here. That, yeah, they're smiling slowly, slowly because they are tourists yes, now yes. in Israel. Then I hope that Everyone will stop and buy something. <laughs> yeah, me too. And on the way from the fifth to the, uh, from the sixth to the seventh, we do have an amazing guy here that will sell you the best coffee in the whole city of Jerusalem. Then remember, the, remember him. I mean, when you see him, you know that I'm talking about him. Enjoy the coffee. Lovely day. To Lovely day. Welcome yeah. to Jerusalem. <laughs> Welcome to Jerusalem. Said. And there are so many places here, and it, it's amazing because people are so nice here. I'm from Israel. There are Palestinians, uh, probably Muslims. I never, never asked them because it's not important for me. And we are best friends. Then we are climbing up to the seventh station. We're gonna skip it because uh, it's all about the seven. Um, the women in uh, the Holy Week, in a way, then we will, oops, we will continue uh, a tour, but I must tell you that the church of the Holy Sepulchre today is inside the city walls. It's actually at the center of the city, but at the time of Jesus, that was the end of the city. Then everything from the main street that you will see to your right and to your left side was outside the city. Remember that city that we are walking now is 
2,000 years old city. Uh, actually, it's more, but Jesus was 2,000 years ago here. Then here he fell for the second time, and this is the main street that I'm talking about. Well, we will climb up to here, to the 8th station. In the 8th station, we will hear the women of Jerusalem. They are crying. Uh, they feel bad when they see Jesus on the way to the crucifixion. He said, why are you crying? I mean, soon uh, it will be even worse. Um, destruction of Jerusalem is on the way. Then this is the eighth station. Right in front of you, you can recognize it with a round square and a plate. And let's bless the cross and the rosary here. We are going back to the main street and straight into the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. But now we can enjoy the Muslim market. Here, this is the Christian quarter, but we came from the Muslim quarter. We came from there. And this is the border between those two quarters. smell of the coffee is um, such amazing. <laughs> Although it's the Christian quarter, the right side, it's still uh, owned by so many Muslims. He, for example, went to pray. And that's how he closed his shop. He went to the mosque. It's Sunday. Lent. Time. Uh, this time it's the first week of the Greek Orthodox and Catholic Lent as well. And the church that we are going to visit is uh, is owned by so many denominations: Greek Orthodox, slash Pravoslav, uh, Catholic, Armenian, but you will find there Egyptian, Ethiopian, and. Um, Church of Syria. So many. And while you are visiting that place, look at this man and stop here to drink yourself something good. Only 10 shekels, isn't it? Only 10 shekels. And we enter to the cat square. But for us, at the fourth century, when St. Ellen, again, another amazing woman, uh, the mother of Constantine who came to you, she built a church that started from the Cat Square. Um, today the church is less than half. Hello, another kitty. Another one. Now you know why it's the Cat Square. Not a lot of tourists are using that place, but I'm climbing up to show you a little bit of uh, uh, the church itself. We are now entering to the Egyptian part of the church. Behind the doors, it's the Ethiopian part of the church. And you can see the two domes of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in front of you. Until we reach the ninth station of the cross, you can see a huge list. Uh, Thomas um, dedicated it to everyone. Barbara, Jason, Jade, Tony, Grace, Carmen, and of course, um, did I mention Charlie? Dandy, the dog. Part of the family, just like in my family, but in my family, it's Coco. She's amazing.
We are reaching now the ninth station of the cross. That's where Jesus fell for uh, the third time. Let's bless our cross and rosary here. And we will enter to the church. Now before you will see a Coptic um, Egyptian monk at the entrance. Tourists are arriving now to Israel and in April I will start to guide as well but don't worry if you want me to prepare videos for you I will do that because I feel like, I feel like it's my mission as well. The Ethiopians believe that they are a creation between Queen Shiva and King Solomon. Uh, nine months later, the first Ethiopian was born. He became the king of Ethiopia. He came to here and his father, King Solomon, gave him the Ark, the Ark of the Covenant. And if you ask me where it is, now you know. started to be crowded again and you know what I'm happy you can see all the uh, two Ethiopian monks are feeding the cats it's so beautiful to see it's so beautiful hello kitty Oh, modern three kittens. I know at least one girl that liked that videos, videos with cats. And I think a lot of you already know because you can subscribe my channel. Um, holy cats chasing holy mouse. Then. We will go now through two Ethiopian churches to the facade of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, but it looks like it's going to take time. Let's see if we can do that. ground floor, the Ethiopian churches are divided into two. The one with the curtain behind it is the ten, that uh, the art of the government area, and only the high priest can go into it. And here in front of you, you can see the disciples area. Oh, look at that. So many people are here now. Well, it's safe to reach Israel, although the COVID is still playing a part here. And uh, lately, more and more, just like in the rest of the world. And no one is using uh, the mask. Done. Although you ask me to um, to bless the women part, uh, let us climb up to see more of the church again. <laughs> she is an amazing woman from Bethlehem that I know. She works just like next to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, uh, the Church of the Nativity. Then we're climbing up to the Golgotha. If you remember my videos for the last two weeks, it was totally empty. Now it's not. It's totally not empty. It's 
Kız mı? Kız mı? Scooby, please. Thank you. All right. Let's try to hide here a little bit and talk about what's happening here. We are at the Golgotha, and while we are talking, let me bless Thomas, the cross, and um, uh, the rosary of yours. At the crucifixion place. And this is an amazing thing. We know that only one man from the 12th was here. It might be John, the beloved one. The rest weren't here. But women, yes, the Bible mentioned that a lot of women actually visit their place. And um, because it's a little bit crowded, I will talk about the women here. Uh, they've been here. Then, first of all, lots of women, and uh, and it's beautiful that the Bible mentioned it. Uh, one of them that every gospel mentioned is Mary Magdalene. For me, Mary Magdalene was uh, one of the most important figures in the Bible. Um, the Bible, in a way, and uh, from the sixth century, they actually talked about how. You know, the six devils and, you know, so many other titles that uh, they gave her. But I actually see it in a different way. In the ancient time, the women's duty was to be at home, to take care of the children, not to obey the husband. But here we are looking at the independence woman that doing whatever she wants to do. She is in a way supporting him. She came from Migda, which is a very rich uh, village. Then, as I believe, people started to suspect, how can it be what she is doing? Then, devils or not devils, believe me, I had so many sins. I did this. I, have, I actually know that I'm not an innocent guy. I'm sure that she wasn't an innocent woman, but let's face it. Do you know someone without sins, except of Jesus and Mary? Uh, I'm not sure. Although soon we will visit the tomb at John 20, we know that um, Mary Magdalene saw that the tomb is empty. She told it to the disciples. The disciples were, were there, saw it, accepted or not, went back to their place. But Mary Magdalene stayed there and she met Jesus. She saw the resurrection of Jesus. And it's actually true in every gospel. She was the first one. Then you can see here the women looking at the crucifixion. Here, you can see Mary Magdalene anointing the body. Right there, body of Jesus. And Mary the mother, we didn't talk about Mary the mother, but she suffered more than anyone else. Think about Mary, when she came to the temple, when she was, when Jesus was 40 days old, Saint Simon told her that her son will die in front of her eyes. Now, can you understand what's happened to a woman that knows the end of her child and she knows that her child will die before her? Can you see the suffering on her face? The agony of Mary Magdalene, uh, of Mary the Mother, started from day 40, from the presentation at the temple. She never smiled. At the Via del Rosa, we walked with hard air, but as I believe, she followed Jesus every inch of the last way of Jesus in Jerusalem. Then, in that case, the Bible mentioned, for example, at um, Matthew, at 20, I think 27, he said that Mary Magdalene was there, Mary the mother of Jacob, Yossi, and Zvadi, sons, and many more women. It's all over the, the Bible. Women takes a big part at the crucifixion. 
Mary came on Sunday to um, purify the body of Jesus, not the disciples. Look at what's happening here. Ah, uh, so nice. Then I want you to see um, the uh, Pieta, Mary the mother, holding the body of her son. Here you can see the spear in her heart. Remember, uh, Saint Simon told her, your son will die in front of your eyes. It will be like a spear will enter to your heart. And let me show you that. The mother will suffer a lot. Such a mother. That's it here as well. Now, before people will think that I'm taking their place, let us go to the, move to the Greek Orthodox part. It's not going to be easy, but although we are not talking a lot about the crucifixion, I want you to see the crucifixion place. This is the crucifixion place and to the left of Jesus you could see Mary, the mother. Later on, when I'm going to be here all, all day, Tom, oh, look at that. Let's wait for the sermon of um, the Greek Orthodox that are living out the church. It's the first week of the land. It's first land Sunday for the Greek Orthodox. Now let's wait for them.
can hear the bells. Uh, we are now next to the tomb of Jesus. We bless uh, your cross, Thomas, Tom, and your family's cross as well at the anointing table. That's where they anointed the body of Jesus uh, before they put him in that tomb. And that tomb doesn't look like a um, cave. And he was buried in one of those caves. But because it had been destroyed so many times, later on, I promised to enter with the cross and the rosary to bless it there, mainly because um, um, I cannot do it with a video. Now they won't allow me to do that because there are lots of tourists, which is good to see. Um, but think I remember Mary Magdalene, and I forgot to mention um, Johanna was there, and Mary, the mother of uh, uh, the sons of uh, um, his Betty, uh, was with her. She knew everything. And one of the most important things is uh, that she saw Jesus before, I mean, the res resurrection of Jesus before the um, 12th or 11th saw it. And according to the Catholic, it was right here. That's where Mary was standing. And that's where Jesus was standing on Sunday when she actually looked for him and she saw a God on her say, did you see my Lord? Did he take me the body? If yes, I'll bring it back to me. You can see the beautiful sin here. And let me bless it for you. Right there. <laughs> I don't want to disturb that beautiful child. <laughs> and another painting that I love to show you is that then women, women power was so strong and we are close to Easter. Tom, this is your video of today. This is your second video. The first one was at the Jordan River and here it is, second blessing. Um, you will see it soon. I know your mother loved it very much. I think she's gonna love it as well. Please show it to everyone and you. If you want to have your own cross, do that. If not, please don't forget to subscribe my channel and you can write, you tell me whatever you want. I will try to answer it. Then see you in my next video. Bye bye.